Well, this painting I painted in like 1970, 19, sorry, 96 maybe. And so that I painted this painting in 1997, 96, 97, that era. And um, we, my husband, Lee Butler, and I were swimming with dolphins a lot in that. We, were, we had a friend who had a uh, okay, cool. Very good. And I'll move out of the way to point to this, sure. OK? I'll yeah, move out of the way to do stuff as you Yeah, talk. all right. No, that's always good. OK, where are you at? Right there. OK, ready, speed. Action. I painted this painting in 1996-97, and in that era, for a few years before that, Lee and I were swimming with dolphins. We had a friend, um, Alma, who was a mate on a boat down in Key West, and we used to go on these boogie boards behind the boat and swim with the dolphins underwater on the boogie boards. It was awesome. It was fabulous. So anyway, I, I wrote a whole series of books that were basically channeled through the dolphins, and I painted these huge paintings that sort of depict a more blissful existence that the dolphins are uh, sort of um, encouraging us. And in the background in these paintings are the houses that Lee designed. These are 100% self-sustainable buildings that take nothing from the earth, air, or water and put nothing into the earth, air, or water. And they float. And they float on the land in a water jacket, like in other paintings, and they float on uh, in the water, just like regular floating in the water, like a boat. And he also designed them so they float up in the air. <laughs> but I don't have those pictured here. But anyway, this is like, you know, fun. Cut. Do like a, oh, you didn't introduce your... Yeah, uh, first time you said your husband's name, this time you just said Lee. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll weave okay. that in, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So do you want me to start from the beginning? The Dolphin Dream painting was painted in, I painted this in 1996-97, in that very creative era when uh, Lee Butler, my husband, and I were swimming with dolphins because our friend Alma was a mate on a boat down in Key West. And um, we would go swimming with her and uh, the captain and the dolphins. And when we were swimming with the dolphins, he had it rigged so we had a boogie board that he dragged behind his trimaran and you could go underwater with the, book, with the dolphins. So you could be swimming underwater with the dolphins. It was a phenomenal experience. And um, the dolphins are encouraging us to play a lot. And so that's what this whole new era is about, a lot more fun. And in the painting are these buildings. These are 100% self-sustainable buildings that take nothing from the earth, air, or water, put nothing into the earth, air, or water, and protect the lives of the inhabitants no matter what the external conditions. That means earthquake, flood, fire, tsunami, it doesn't matter. He designed these buildings to withstand the forces of nature no matter what they were. So like I say, this was that era in 96, 97, where I painted a lot of paintings that had to do with dolphins. I wrote a lot of books, the screenplay about all of this. So you'll see more of it. So this painting was during, like I say, a very creative period in 96, 97. And we, call, we called our whole concept the dolphin dream. And the buildings, all of these floating buildings, are called ecotecture. So um, now we'll show you some other things. Like that? Let's, let me do a practice first, and then you no, see I'm how it is. Roll it. Ready? Oh, OK. This painting I painted when Lee and I. I was. Okay, all right. So on that side of them, so that you no, see no, them. No, no, in, yeah, in front of them, really. So that they're they're in front just, of me. Yeah. Okay, so you're, I'm more towards the white. Oh. Yeah, you're in front of the trees. Really nice, oh, this is on this side. Well, that's all right. It'll turn. Action. 
this painting um, I painted in Boulder Creek, California, when Lee and I lived in the woods in a cabin with, which was a former methamphetamine lab. Um, it had no running water, no electricity. It was in the middle of the redwood forest. And um, I, there was a cabin, an abandoned cabin below where we were staying. And we called that George's cabin. And I would go down there and collect whatever George had left behind. And he had left behind paint kits. He was, must have been an aspiring artist. He had plans of, become, of doing artwork because he had all the materials needed for an artist. And I painted all of this huge series of paintings in California, living in the woods with nothing, with just found materials. And um, this painting also is depicting a, 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 more, a more bountiful and uh, luxurious future when people can just be themselves and be in nature. Here, there, a lot of these paintings have little close-ups. People in the woods, people in the waterfalls. Those are more buildings. <laughs> these are Lee's buildings. These buildings that that are all of his new buildings are rounded. They have no squares, no uh, angles. Is this going or is this not going? It's going. All right. Steve, this for a second. Action. This era when we were living in the woods, virtually homeless, <laughs> aside from living in this cabin, um, below this cabin, this, this, these cabins were built by our landlady, whose name was Judith von Sluten, and uh, she calls herself the land bitch. But, <laughs> but she had, they had stored a jacuzzi underneath this fountain, underneath this cabin, excuse me. They had stored a jacuzzi underneath the cabin. And I drug it out. And we, this cabin was literally teetering over the edge of a cliff. And I drug the jacuzzi out and stuck it, wedged it between some stumps, and got myself a bath by um, getting little, bucket, little things of water from the local um, well and the local cistern, that is. And um, so this guy is coming in right now, sorry. All right, so anyway, what um, I got, I better get him, excuse me one second. Cause time it is by chance? Uh, that 20 to 3, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Math, right? I can't add. <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, what would you like? To, the more you look at the camera, the better on this. But if okay, you I will. Okay, um, action. This painting I painted with the great masters in mind. I painted it in mind with Manet, uh, uh, a famous painting. I can't remember the name of it now. With the Angra painting with the um, Duchess of Alba by um, Goya. So that was the sort of those were the inspirations shall I say, in those paintings, but of course always Rousseau, Henry Rousseau, and, um, and I would say some American primitive painters who painted Peaceable Kingdom paintings. So that, those would be the influences in that painting. That's good enough for that. Ready? Action. Quiet guy! <laughs> Ready, this paint, this is a screen that I painted of um, Lee's architecture, the floating biospheres, the buildings that are floating not just on the, on the water, but also in the sky. Okay, this is good right here. Let's see about this. Isn't that beautiful?
I don't have to go out and buy more flowers. Remember I was talking about it? I said I was going to go buy more flowers? Yeah. Cool. Somebody, I... Lee and I had the Dolphin Dream um, as our logo and as our business, and it was one dolphin in a rainbow. And then when he had open heart surgery, he had a uh, kidney transplant, and when he got open heart surgery, he was a month in the hospital in Fort Lauderdale. And every day I would drive down from my store on Worth Avenue down to Fort Lauderdale, and I'd pass a tattoo parlor, and I kept, we were talking about changing our logo to incorporate three dolphins, the Trinity, and um, we did it the night before his open heart surgery, and my plan was to have a tattoo when he was having the surgery, but I didn't get the tattoo. Um, anyway, but this is the logo that we designed that night, and as you see, it's a heart made up, composed of three dolphins, and that's the dolphin dream, and dreams come true. You know, I didn't even think of this, but there's, there are 73 paintings in this show. I don't know how we're going to do this, but we'll just go fast. Well, you need to pick your best ones. I know, I've got to, exactly. We've got to pick the, just a few. So we'll just stick with that. For We won't do this. Oh, we've got to do this one here, and this one maybe. And get the idea. Well, you'll, what you'll do is you'll just show the other ones by single shots, right? Well, you can, yeah. That's what I'd like. I'd like you to show them all. I'll only speak about a few of them. But... We don't need to do every single one. I mean, we can do quickly. So when Lee and I were, um, that period when we were swimming with the dolphins, this judge in West Palm Beach that we knew gave me an article from Scientific American. I can't remember what year it was, but it was from years ago. This was back in the 90s. It was probably in the 80s. And the article was uh, Scientific American was studying why dolphins, certain dolphins, were making this ring of water, underwater, this ring. And so they studied these dolphins for months or maybe years, and they finally came to the conclusion that the reason the dolphins were making these rings was just to play. <laughs> so I did this whole series of dolphins just playing with the rings of water. the noise. I'm just going to roll this like it is. All right, just roll it. <laughs> Ready. A little bit more. A little bit less. That's my perfection. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready. Ready, Betty. Ready. Action. So um, a lot of artists, American artists in the early revolutionary years, primitive painters, painted scenes like this, not exactly like this, but li with this idea of the peaceable kingdom, of the lion laying with the lamb, of peace on earth. And I started this painting in 1981 when I was a student at Boston University School of uh, Fine Arts in graduate school for my sure, master's. Hide, that, uh, microphone behind it. hide it? No, no, just your, your hand. Oh, that? my hand. Should we start, start again? again yeah. All right, yeah. Right. Just a, just yeah, yeah, exactly. Action. Okay. Okay, ready? Action. A lot of American artists in um, the early years of our country painted scenes like this, peaceable kingdom scenes, scenes where the lion is laying with the lamb, where there's peace on earth. And I started having these visions back in the late 70s and um, early 80s. And when I was a student at Boston University School for Fine Arts, getting my master's degree, I did a series of small egg temper paintings on this theme and painted, started this painting. I had this painting when I met my future husband, when I met Lee. Hold on, hold on. I, had, yep. I, had my, I had this painting. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I'll do it again. 
No, no, just do, I have this. Okay, page. I will. You say when. Ready? Action. I had this painting uh, when I met my future husband, Lee Butler, and when I saw his architecture, which portends exactly what these paintings are about, Peace on Earth, because living in those buildings portends peace on earth. I incorporated some of his buildings floating in the sky, angels, you know, dolphins, the floating biospheres in the background. So I added to the painting from 1981 um, some other elements back in the early 90s. He's going to have some noise, he told us. Okay. Well, these cuts here will be put over like some of your talking, you know. Perfect. <laughs> Is that a floating angel? Yeah, they're angels. I never finished it, I just let it be. <laughs> Go up to the yeah, you just need to go up to there, right? Up to the, uh, oh, yeah, like this. Um, I said that right when I was out of breast, but that wasn't, that didn't mean anything. I just like the dress. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's so funny, I'm, I'm at the, uh, okay. I didn't uh, interpret so, it anyway, really. <laughs> no, I was just sort of watching the tape, uh, whatever. Okay, let me just uh, get a good focus on this. It's a little hard to get a focus on it. Because this is cool. Okay. All right, step in there and see what you look like. You want to walk into this one? Okay. Ready? Action. Well, this was my wedding dress to my second husband, Peter Arts. And, um, when we decided, we, I married shortly after Lee passed away, and um, when we decided to divorce, I decided to write the vows in the entire wedding ceremony on the dress. So that's what this is. This is the entire wedding ceremony, including the songs that were sung and et cetera. Both the front and the back are covered with it. It's all a work of art. Okay, I'm not going to use that. Divorced last week in Belgium. I still have to get divorced in America. I think I got divorced. I hope so. Yeah, I don't you know. Say it can be used against you in the court of law. Oh yeah, <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> the horse they rode well, in. That's not, I don't like that. Second, Second husband. Horse. Okay. He's a good guy. He's Keep such a rolling. Speed. Okay. Action. I moved to Florida because of um, the fact that I was painting orchids and living in Boston. It was freezing cold up there, and I had come down to Florida to an orchid show, and won all the awards at the show as well. Got all these amazing commissions down in Miami. So I realized I should move down here with my orchid painting. And the same year, the, the, um, Amer or the year following, uh, the American Orchid Society moved its headquarters down to West Palm Beach. So I was right in the right spot. And um, at the time, the president, the man whose property the Orchid Society was on, Mr. Vaughn, used to let me come into the greenhouses there and paint all of these orchids. So I would do these huge sweeping pictures. This is a gicle of one of my originals. The original is four by six feet, but uh, big, very detailed paintings of orchids. Okay, cut. 
talk. Ready? Yep. These are gigantic four by eight foot paintings of uh, orchids in pots. This is a gicle of it. And these are the original watercolors that I started with for some hotels in Atlanta and in um, Texas. I had an agent that was selling my paintings to presidential suites, my paintings of orchids, my watercolors of orchids. As hotels were being constructed, she was placing these uh, larger paintings than these. These are the only ones that I still have from that era, from the 80s, when I was painting these orchid paintings. And this painting I did on papyrus that I got in Egypt when I was in Egypt as the guest of Vicki Oberoi, who um, hosted a show of my paintings in New Delhi. And this is hand painted on papyrus, and I wanted that, that natural fiber to show through, so we decided not to frame it under glass. Okay. Yeah. This is an awning that I painted, and actually, the light shines through the paint and the fabric really cool. It looks like stained glass windows sometimes. I've painted a few awnings for people. So this is an awning that I did. When I moved to Palm Beach, oh, again. When I moved to Palm Beach, yeah, you still are, I think. I don't know, are you? When I moved to Palm one, two, three, action. When I moved to Palm Beach, uh, I started a series of paintings of local landmarks, including the breakers. And I would sit in front of the breakers and draw different drawings of the breakers. And there was a little shop inside the hotel that would sell my paintings one after another as I produced them. So I decided to start making postcards and greeting cards. And that started my business, which I did for resort hotels, municipalities, um, uh, civic organizations, but mostly for people in their homes, and I call them house portraits. Swing speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard. I thought it too. There we go. Action. So in my very classic iconic house portraits, what I do is I render the image of the building centrally. And then in the border, I put a story in pictures about the building, the house, the boat, whatever it might be that I'm depicting. So they say that a picture is worth a thousand words, I guess that um, my pictures were thousands of words because it tells the whole story in th lots of little pictures, like a patchwork quilt kind of thing. This happens to be Ernest Hemingway's house. I had um, did a series of Key West paintings when we were down in Key West. And they were made into postcards and greeting cards and t-shirts and souvenir items because that was the business and uh, sold all through the Keys for many years. Linda and Terry Bosley hired me to do this painting of their boat, The Imagine. And they, were, they named the boat The Imagine for the John Lennon song, The Imagine. Imagine. And um, they used to take people out in Palm Beach for dinner cruises and that kind of thing. And uh, John Lennon happened to be their guest. And they wanted to commemorate that when John and Yoko and their young son, Sean, were sailing with them. So they asked me to do this painting for them, which I did. And in the painting is depicted the song that John wrote to his son, young son, Sean, at that time, called Tiger Lily. Um, and so that's, that's that story. Do me a favor. Yeah. 
Again? No, right there. Point, yeah. point up to your... Actually, it's the song The Imagine I put on there, but I, the song Tiger Lily well, is What do you definitely... want to say here? But just, I just want yeah. to see your hand go up there. Ready? Okay, yep. Yeah, ready? Action. And depicted is the song The Imagine by John Lennon. So put your hand up there a couple more times. You don't have to talk, but like point, uh, not, not, not stage, but just kind of like you're talking. You went up there like you went up there like this and point up here. Like this? Oh yeah. That's a picture of John and wait, wait, where's that one at? Where's John? Okay, hold on. Do that, eh? Okay. And and that's a picture of John and there are various other pictures about their experiences on the boat and what the imagine was to them. Very good. All right, cool. Okay, ready? Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> Rolling. Speed. Action. I'm a yoga instructor, and um, I studied yoga with BKS Iyengar, who was the most famous Hatha yoga instructor, still is. He just did celebrated his birthday. Sorry, Shall we do it again? Let's do it again. I, I was a little... And we're rolling speed. What was my number? 70. 70. 70, right? Okay. Yeah, but you went to like 80 or I got something. Yeah, 82 to 70. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got three reflections of this. This is awesome. Ready? Action. Well, I'm a yoga instructor, and my teacher is BKS Iyengar, the most renowned yoga teacher of this era. And um, I wanted to go to India to study yoga with him, but decided that if I was going to go to India, I might as well stay for six months, because it was a long trip to get over there. And I had a friend, Gavin Douglas, who planned my whole trip to India, helped me to plan it. He had lived there with the British Raj. and. Um, he helped me to plan my trip, and I ended up staying for quite a while, for like six months, and ended up painting a lot. And uh, meeting Vicki Oberoi, the owner of the Oberoi Hotel, whom Gavin introduced me to, who staged a show for me in New Delhi a couple years later. And he's the owner. He owns maybe 45 of these India paintings. The only painting that I have in America is this painting right here. And that painting is of a Nepalese monk of a monk or a Tibetan monk in Nepal when I was in Kathmandu and uh, planning a trek to go up into the mountains. And this man was preparing the holy books to uh, be carried by Sherpas up to the high heights. So that's what this painting depicts. And the other paintings here are all depictions of uh, my travels in India, which was magical and wonderful. And uh, you either love India or you hate it. I adored it. And some people compare my paintings to um, Amrita Shergill, and I happen to live on Sh Amrita Shergill Marg in New Delhi for a little while, so that was kind of cool. So the, I moved to Palm Beach because of um, a gal named Mimi Welfeld, who had uh, Sunrise Whole Foods in Palm Beach for like 30 years, and she was a yoga instructor and a friend of a yoga colleague of mine. And a couple years ago, she invited me to come to her beautiful garden in, at her home in Palm Beach and do a series of paintings. And this is one of the paintings from that time. When I graduated from uh, the Rhode Island School of Design in 1976, I, start, I set up a studio at Boston Center for the Arts. And the Arts Center in the south end of Boston was adjacent to the Boston Ballet. So I used to go and paint pictures and do drawings of the um, ballet, of the ballerinas during their practices. And this is um, the only surviving one that I, the only one that I still have. All the rest were sold back when. And this is pastels and um, charcoal and Conti crayon and, um, and oil crayon. And I was really just after the whole idea of the motion of the movement with the lines. Okay. All right. Let's. Rolling. Action. 
When I was a student at Rhode Island School of Design, some of my friends and I would go to the beach when the weather was really nice. We'd go out to Narragansett. We had a farm out there, the school did, and we'd also go down to the beach to like Kingston, Rhode Island, and we'd do what's called plein air painting. And so this was one of those events. In um, the first time I went to Italy was with my family in the 60s, and I just was fell in love with the place. I wanted to live there. I wanted to be there for the rest of my life. I never wanted to come home. And so when I got the opportunity to go there with my school, I stayed there for the honors program. And also I went back to work with a, a famous Italian artist, Giacomo Manzu, in 1976. I think it was around that time and I did this series of um, watercolor gouache mixed media paintings of the various beautiful architecture in Rome and in Florence and this was Isola Tibernia which is the island right in the middle of Rome beautiful place and the light hitting it and I lived right around the corner from there so really fond of that painting. Okay. Ready, Betty. Uh, a few years ago, I was hired by the town of Palm Beach to um, do the images for the cover of okay. the. Action. Maybe ten years ago, I can't remember, but uh, some years ago, I was hired by the town of Palm Beach to do the cover for the do the painting for the cover of their annual report, and this was one of the images of Brazilian docks that was on that cover. I've also done the cover for the Chamber of Commerce in Palm Beach and the Real Estate Guides and a lot of other publications. But this one was Brazilian Docks. Where's rolling, speed. All right, so here's this. Wait, 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 let's move that wire. Uh, oh, this wire? Absolutely. This way? Okay. Well, here's the whole story. Plant, nurture, and protect trees. So um, that was how Lee and I met and how we fell in love. And the whole story is depicted here in this picture. And um, what happened was the city of West Palm Beach was going to cut down this beautiful tree. And I heard about it when I was painting a painting for the calendar for the city of West Palm Beach I was hired to paint. And um, didn't know what to do and found out that the only thing I could do was possibly tie myself up to the tree. So I, in the attempt to do that, I realized I couldn't, the girth of the equipment was the tree was so wide that I couldn't put the chain that I had around the tree so I had to call this man that I had just recently met to tie me to the tree which he did with pleasure <laughs> and uh, anyway the rest is history as they say but what happened is um, we managed to save the tree for a couple of weeks and then a few weeks out they ended up cutting the tree down but um, it was just a one of those magic moments and one of those things that um, I was just overwhelmed by the um, fact that people were going to cut down the trees in front of the armory. I just I couldn't believe they were cutting down these gorgeous trees. And it was like, the, I am a certified tree hugger, certified. And the other thing about the tree is that Lee, his first invention, the gravity geothermal envelope, he got the information from the tree and the information about how to live on the earth without destroying the earth in any way, but getting your resources, that is, your heat and cooling. You could live in any temperature, hot or cold, you know, equatorial or frigid, in one of Lee's envelope houses, and it, the information came to him from the tree. And that was, he asked the tree, why is it so easy for you and so difficult for mankind? And the, tr the answer came to him in a flash, and he drew it out, and it became the basis for his work, the envelope homes, the gravity, geothe excuse me, the gravity geothermal envelope homes that he designs that are um, 
take nothing for their working um, for heating and cooling. And that was the beginning of his career in environmental architecture and given to him by a tree. And it says it all here, oriented to the sun, which is the source, providing oxygen and protection from the elements and grounded in the earth. And so that's the story of the tree. We could uh, do well. The Indians call them our grandfathers. So we do well to learn from them. When we came back to Florida and from California, um, I actually sold a print, a Francesca Woodman print, to Sotheby's. And I bought a trailer in Lakeside of the Palm Beaches, this adorable little um, trailer park. And Lee was very sick at the time. And we were living there until the Hurricane Francis blew away my art studio, which was the whole outside of the trailer. And um, eventually, Hurricane Wilma took the entire trailer. So that, that moved us out real fast. But at that time, Lee was in the nursing home and on his last breaths at that time, unfortunately. But this was um, a little painting I did of the trailer on the lake. So um, living on the vineyard when I was growing up, my aunt and uncle owned, that was where... Okay, there you go, it's uh, action. Okay, so um, I had a show of my paintings in Martha's Vineyard. Uh, I was teaching art at Nathan Mayhew Seminars, a school for art on the vineyard in the summers. And I was living at, my family had the Captain Fisher house, my aunt and my uncle. And which is a great old manse in Egertown. And it was actually the picture the first house portrait that I did was of the Captain Fisher house. That was how I started my career doing house portraits, was on Martha's Vineyard. And this was a show that I did in, at Chilmark Bank in Beetle Bun Corner in uh, Martha's Vineyard back in 1977. This painting is a painting I did of uh, my uncle on Martha's Vineyard of his couch. And I oh, call it, OK. All right. Got a reflection? You close the door and I'm done. Okay. So in the Captain Fisher house was this um, couch, and my uncle told me the story about when he bought the Captain Fisher house in 1919, this beautiful uh, captain's house in Egertown, right look, overlooking the harbor. And um, and it was decrepit at the time, and he turned it into a boarding house before he met my aunt. Anyway, at, in that era, he was a plumber, and that was before he put himself to law school. And sometimes when he would do work for people, they weren't able to pay him. So they would pay him in, you know, chickens or whatever. And in this case, they, this guy paid him with a couch. And so that was in their living room in uh, the Captain Fisher house, and I painted a picture of it, Uncle Marty's couch, I call it. Yeah, okay. I did a series of paintings in Palm Beach. They're all pictures of fountains in Palm Beach. So I depicted all of the fountains in sepia tones, and these are some of these are prints of the fountains, some are the originals of the fountains. Then there's a series of paintings from Florence, Italy, in Spoleto, Italy, Firenze, all the places in Italy that I love so much, and these lovely light watercolors and uh, pen and ink. And Firenze, the beautiful city of Florence, Spoleto, which is a gorgeous city, Spello, which is a city, I a little tiny village in Umbria that I stayed in, and Cortona. Well, the tall ships came to New England in 1976 for the 200th year anniversary of our country. And I did a series of paintings of the tall ships, and this is one of them. This actually might be the Shenandoah in Nantucket, I think. I'm not sure, but 
I think it was in that era that I was painting them.